In 2012, the National Youth Culinary Program was formed. It was a partnership between the Youth Services Unit, Rick's Carlton Grand Cayman, Progressive Distributors, and Home Gas Limited. Since then, several young people have been through the program, and now they're ready for television. The National Youth Culinary Program first got its notoriety in Flavor Magazine. It was a page sponsored by Home Gas called Home Gas Test Kitchen. Hence, we named this series Home Gas Test Kitchen. An event that I'm very thankful for, very thankful to see, and to do so I'll offer my thanks to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pause to thank you for life and for health and strength and for all the talents that you've given us. We thank you for Home Gas and their sponsorship of this event. We thank you for all the other sponsors and contributors, especially for the young people, those who are hosting and showcased in this series, Britain the Bard and all the talents that she has, and Ayanna Davis Eden and all the talents that you have. We thank you for the narrator, proud of them on the Eliane Perry, and all the young people that are behind this production. We hope that this is enjoyable and it brings glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to Home Gas Test Kitchen, hosted by Brittany Bodden and Ayanna Davis Eden, narrated by Proud of Them Honoree, Eliane Perry. Chef Sarah was in Top Chef Season 3 and today we'll feature her in our very first episode in our first season. To celebrate this moment, Chef has a few friends joining us, but first let's get the Cayman style beef going. It is offered on the menu here at Smokies. Hi ladies, welcome to Smokies. Thank you for coming and filming at Smokies, um, which is in, Cay in Cayman Islands. It's right by Ale Thompson's. We are a barbecue smokehouse. I actually call it a Caribbean barbecue smokehouse. This is a combination of smoked meat, barbecue, with Caribbean sides and Caribbean flair, because I'm Jamaican and we're in Cayman. Um, on the menu today, we have uh, Cayman salad beef. We also have Alice's macaroni and cheese and coleslaw. It's called Alice's macaroni and cheese because it's my grandmother's recipe and she was from the Turks and Caicos Islands. It's a very traditional Caribbean um, Sunday, Sunday dinner or Sunday lunch dish. Uh, now, when it comes to the Cayman salad beef, um, usually you use, it's called a number number seven cut, so it's uh, a bone in and has several different uh, cuts of meat on one big piece. Uh, but today we're using top round and we're just adding some bones in there to help give it a little, a little extra flavor. Because when you're cooking, and cooking for a long time like braising, you want to use bones because bones add flavor. Um, yeah, so let's get started. I like to cut it down into smaller pieces so it doesn't take as long. So that's what I'll do here. Can you do me a favor? Can you pass it that pot right there? Now, when you're braising, usually, when you're braising, you usually want to um, sear off the meat, but we don't do that with the Cayman style beef. You marinate it overnight with lots of onions and seasoning pepper. I like to use scotch bonnet. Back in the day, uh, we didn't have a lot of, or there wasn't a lot of produce available on Cayman, so that's why they had very, minimal produce, which is, which is what we call ground provisions, onions and stuff like that. So that's why they use onions and really nothing else. Some people like to add thyme in there, some people add garlic. I don't add garlic, I don't add thyme. It's just onions, peppers, and it's cooked, cooks, cooks in its own juices. So I'm just going to throw it in the pot here. One of you ladies is going to season it with some salt and pepper. Make sure you wrap it up good. I have some white onions here, which I am just going to take to the food processor because we are in uh, 2016 and we can do things quickly with equipment.
So that is about, uh, that looks like about two pounds of meat. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to use a few onions and then we'll put it in the food processor with the, with the scotch bonnet and rub it on the meat. Usually I like to marinate it overnight, but we can't, we don't have that luxury today. A little lesson about scotch bonnets. Um, you see, they're different colors. When it's green, it's not as hot. As it ripens, it changes color and it gets hotter. So I'm using one green one for the extra flavor and two ripe ones. I don't really leave the seeds in there because I like it extra spicy. And if you leave the seeds in, that makes it very, very spicy. Check for the noise. See, it's like a paste. You can sweet smell that scotch on it. There we go. So this goes straight over the meat. Rub it up good. All right? And we can put the top on it, let it sit for a little bit. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Home Gas Test Kitchen is sponsored by Home Gas Limited, Foster's Food Fair, Curly's, Seco Avis, A.L. Thompson's, Bon Vivant, Gigi's Kitchen, Lorna's Rubis, Clifton Hunter High School, and Makeup by Letitia Eden and supported by chefs from Grand Hold House, Smokies, Blue Cilantro, and coached by Georgian of Gigi's Kitchen. Alice's macaroni and cheese. And the macaroni is already cooked, but what I like to do is I saute off my um, peppers and onions and then add a little scotch bonnet and thyme to that. And then we'll make a custard and throw it all together and put it in the oven. A lot of people don't like onions and peppers and stuff in their macaroni and cheese, but I'm sorry, that's the way Alice does it. So it has to be that way. And Alice is a Yeah. Oh my God. Now, you don't season it all at once. You don't season it and you season it different, in different stages. Because then that way you can control the salt. Yeah. I like to get good color on this. So I'm going to let this cook a little bit. And while this is cooking, we're going to throw the custard and stuff together. Nice to be cool. I have about four cups of water. I can't remember what so milk whole milk. I might not use all of it. I'm going to reserve a little bit just in case. And then to that, this is probably about two pounds of uh, a macaroni, elbow macaroni. See? I'll add a dozen eggs. And then we'll add everything else to this. to make sure it has enough eggs in there. Um, it gets very viscous. You can feel it if with your fingers, right? So that's how I know that it's enough eggs. I think some, one of you ladies I grabbed the onions and peppers. You're not really supposed to add hot items to cold items, but this is gonna get cooked anyway, and it's very rustic, so that's okay. Yeah. That's good. Thank you, my love. And then we're going to add some salt. Not too much, because remember, we seasoned it already. Some salt and pepper. We're going to add the macaroni. We're not going to add all of it. I'm going to check it to see if there's enough liquid in there. I like it pretty liquidy. And then remember, we're also going to add the cheese. So we have cheddar cheese, which is already grated. I use about a pound of cheese. That's good. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I'm going to add a little pepper jack in there just to give it a little extra kick. I also would like to add some chopped scotch bonnets. I've seen the Trinity, our Trinity in at least in the in in the Jamaica. My Trinity is everything usually gets thyme, scotch bonnet, and allspice. 
but this is not going to get all sweats. <laughs> Thank you. You don't like all sweats? I like all sweats. Why? to make sure it has enough seasoning, right? And yes, I'm going to put my finger in my mouth. I'm sorry. That's good. I wash my hands, but that's how I taste. Use it a little bit more. I'm going to wash my hands. And it's good with the scotch. So now, that should have enough salt now. I'm just going to pour it straight in here. Some more cheese on top. Yeah. See, and you can see it's nice and thick. Push it down. Mm -hmm. Get a little more sugar on top. And I'm going to bake it uncovered in the oven. For how long? This one I'm probably going to have half an hour. Okay. And I usually do it in about 425 seconds. So this is a super duper combi oven. It does anything and everything. I have it at 375. I'll just do it at 375. Because it's small, so it's gonna cook fast. Yeah. And we'll just check it. I have it on for 30 minutes and we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah. So we're back with the Cayman South Beef now. As I said, it's super, super easy. It goes on the stove and you cover it and you cook it. It's already seasoned. Uh, it cooks for quite a while. Um, this is probably going to cook for two hours. And you cook it to the point where it shreds. And then it also creates its own juices. Um, one, because the onion's in there, and, and two, because the juice comes out of the beef as you cook it slowly. And it creates its own gravy, which you need. Um, so that's it for that. One little thing I want to tell you about the Cayman beef. Um, cook it low and slow. Because if you cook it high, it's going to evaporate all the juices and it's going to make it really dry. And as we do a lot of things here at Smokey, it's low and slow. So it really makes it yummy and juicy. Okay, so for the coleslaw that we have here, um, it is, I call it a Caribbean coleslaw. Because here in the Caribbean, we don't use a lot of mayonnaise. A lot of people can't afford mayonnaise or it's just not part of what they eat. It's not part of their culture, um, but I use, I do use a small amount, but it's heavy on the vinegar and the sugar, because that's what we like in the Caribbean, sweet. <laughs> so I use a combination, you want to help? I use a combination of red cabbage, white cabbage. I usually use a little bit more white, um, and I use a red color. Uh, yeah. And carrots. And this goes in there. And of course, scotch bonnet. Gets everything. Everything gets got fun. Uh, carrots. And scallions. I, uh, now with the scallions, um, I cut them nice and fine so it doesn't take over the whole flavor of the coleslaw. It adds a nice little depth to it. And I don't use too much. For all that cabbage, I probably use a quarter cup of, of um, scallions. Then we have vinegar. I'm probably going to use, uh, I'd say, a quarter cup. Maybe half, but we'll taste it and see how it goes. Sugar, heavy on the sugar. Lots of sugar. Um, salt and pepper, not too much salt and pepper. Just a little bit. And then the mayonnaise. You want some gloves? Okay, so now we mix the sugar, vinegar, salt and pepper. We're going to add a little bit of mayonnaise. So, for all of that, I guess, I'm going to start to see more of the mayonnaise. The mayonnaise adds a little creaminess to it, which 
nice on the palate. You know, a couple other things about smokies. You know, everything here uh, is made in house. We buy we buy nothing under the can except for like tomato paste and mayonnaise. I could make the mayonnaise, but we use so much of it. But everything else, all of our spice rubs, all of our sauces, all of our vinaigrettes, everything is made here. It's uh, true whole foods, and you know what you're putting into your body. Uh, yeah, we make our own bacon, I make my own sausages, uh, I make my own pastrami, I make, we make everything. I, I don't do it myself, obviously. I do it with my crew and I couldn't do it without them. They're a huge part of, of what we are here. Jiggly, I'm gonna put the top on it, but that's what you want. It looks good. This oven is very, very hot, and we cook. You cook. It cooks with a combination of steam and convection. We're gonna take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. The Cayman Islands National Youth Culinary Program is a partnership of the Youth Services Unit, the Ritz Carlton Grand Cayman, Progressive Distributors Limited, and Home Gas Limited. So because we put the cover back on so it doesn't get more color, okay? Just so you guys know, a lot of people start it with the cover first and then, then take the cover off and, and, and exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See all the, all the juices? That's all its own juices from the meat and from the onions. And that's what your gravy is going to be. Okay, so our mac and cheese ready hot look at it see that's gorgeous and it's no jiggly it's a little jiggly blast just because the custard is cooked but it's not wet 
So we're going to take this over to the stove and then we're going to check the cream and salad. That's what you do when you're cooking it, so it pulls it apart naturally. So next, we're going to sit down and eat. So see you soon. There we go. So, this is family style, as we do here in the Caribbean. And you guys know where we are, and you know where we are, and you guys are welcome to come and cook with me in the kitchen. Until next time, I'm Jared Miles. And I'm Ileana Powery. And this is Home Gas Test Kitchen. Oh, 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 o